This lesson for the Windows Passive Crossover Designer is a relatively short one. This is to show the different traps, the topologies to be in series before or after filter, and the topology to be in parallel with the driver. This uh, is the same for a tweeter, mid-range, and a woofer, so what I'm going to do is show an example for the tweeter. To bring up the circuit that this actually involves, I've got the crossover schematic for the tweeter to bring up here. We take a look here. This is the series section before the crossover. Then we have the series section after the crossover. This center section is the main crossover section right here. That uh, keeps popping up. Uh, these are some display inf uh, information that is helpful at times and sometimes irritating. Over here we have the parallel legs 1, 2, and 3. These are the three sections to come after the crossover that be in parallel with the driver. So we have three in individual ones there. We have one trap after and we have one before. Those relate to these two sections over here on the left for the tweeter. For the woofer should be the same. It's in a slightly different position in the mid-range because there's so much going on, but the actual circuits are the same. If you look here, we have the topology in series before after. We have a before crossover circuit and an after crossover circuit. Now here you can see that we have no series elements selected, so the before section is grayed. And when you, uh, if we were to look at that circuit again, you'd see that those don't appear on the circuit. Here we have a parallel RL contour filter selected, and that's in use in this particular design. Each of these has several options that can be selected. You can either go straight to them or use the scroll wheeler, uh, scroll wheel. In this case, we have the parallel RL contour, but if we wanted to scroll through, I could simply select that and run the scroll wheel, and you can see that it runs through each of them as I scroll. And when I do that as well, you'll see the uh, graphs change to correspond to the change in the way the circuit is set up. So in this case, what we have is a uh, parallel RL contour circuit. We have an inductor with a resistor in parallel with that. As we make changes up and down, you'll be able to see changes in the filter target, which is over here excuse me, the filter that is, not the target, but the filter itself. Let me turn off the target. So the filter is displayed over here on and off. Over here we have the electrical circuit. We can turn on the compensation to see whether there's anything there at this time. There's not a compensation circuit shown. We don't have that turned on because that would be related to this right here. Over here we keep, we keep making the changes and you can see both change. It can, it'll be slow to, you know, at some point, but then as we get closer to zero, you can see that it's having a much bigger impact with the small changes. So this is how you would tailor the circuit in any number of ways. It's not simply this section up here as this portion controls. What this is doing is simply putting a very gradual taper to the top end. I use this to try to flatten the top end and tune the top end because this had a modestly rising high end. When I tried other circuit configurations using the main circuit, I had other issues. This seemed to work out best, and it also gave me an option so that if a user wanted to have a slightly increasing top end, they could simply not use that element, and then you would have a rising top end. Now you can play with that and actually get a gradual one. So, you know, it depends on what you want to do. Uh, you can do a lot of things with it. The same thing down here is for the circuits in parallel. These can be used to tailor the top end. If you you'll scroll through them as well, what you have here is the options of parallel resistor only, a series RL, a series RC, the classic Zobel, and then a trap, an RLC. So if you take a look here, you can see it's that grayed out all three elements have something in them. So in this case, that's a trap. Interesting thing here, let me look at the target, set the target up. 
What I did with this one was to attempt to try to better match to the target. If you take a look here, because of the interaction with the impedance of the driver itself, which here you can see it bumps up a little bit below 1K, maybe 900, slightly below that, there's a peak. You can see that because of the, this crossover interaction with the impedance of the driver itself. So what happens is because the impedance bumps up here, the crossover attenuation is reduced in that area. So this section here has a slight bump up and then it comes back into the target that I want to meet. So what I did in this case to try and do that was to bring up a series RLC. This is a series trap that's in parallel with the driver. And I simply click on that and you can see how close there's a match. Now that we have this good match here, we can verify, of course, that also it doesn't cause any other issues outside of that area. If you've got a wide trap, sometimes you might see a change up here. Actually, there's a slightly better result here in the knee area. If I set that to no circuit elements, you can see there's just a little bit of a bump up there. Even this section here, there's a slight mismatch. So actually, that's really reasonably significant. So if we go back and put it back in, we can take a look at the summed response. That's one thing you also need to pay attention to when you're working with the system response. If I take that out, what we see is a slight bump up here. This is not far enough down that it doesn't have a significant impact. It looks like it's maybe a 1 dB change. If I put it back in, we can see it go back down. And it's around the 1 to 3K area, which is where the ear is the most sensitive. So this particular trap probably will have a very modest impact in the perceived response. So you need to be aware that uh, you may not necessarily want to have that perfect match right there. If you want to bring it up just a little bit, you can do this and it makes a very slight change and it might be useful that way. The only thing that's different is in this case, if you notice, there's quite a bit of a increase in output in the low range of the tweeter. In some cases, depending on the tweeter and the design and the target uh, output response uh, that you want, absolute SPL response you want from the system, it could stress the tweeter. So something like this that comes in and drops that section down takes away uh, some of the stress on the tweeter. So you might want to compensate by maybe bringing up the woofer just a little bit to level it off a little, you know, which would probably be a slight increase in the crossover point. So there are a lot of things to consider, but at least in this case, uh, looking at the tweeter alone, the response is good. And that ends this section.